take her in. Okie dokie. Sure. All right. So it looks like uh, you've been a lifeline user for a little over a week now. Um, can you go uh, tell me a little bit about like the business that you're you're planning for right now? Uh, it's a business that's already in business, and the um, services vary. I run a software company. I'm an engineer. I've been an owner in the past, and now I am branching into product. Just to say that we've done services in the past. The services resulted in multiple reusable parts of code that I'm taking the leap of faith to uh, make into a product now. So. Oh, cool. Awesome. Yeah, it is. And it targets wealth managers, and that's very different than I've done in the past and having a very defined target, you know, wealth managers of $100 million or more in assets under management. So oh, okay. I did a sp- – I don't know how much you want more to hear about that. I mean, no, like context is helpful. I mean, yeah. <clears throat> I mean, honest. so the, like the way this works is uh, we do a kind of like a high-level overview of the software. Uh, and, you know, I ask, I ask questions up front just to kind of hear – Hear the call towards like you know what you've done already. Yeah. If you have any other questions about any features or or if there were like even really specific things that you have questions about. Uh, I saw when you signed up that you said you didn't really have any like specific topics or questions. But no. <clears throat> I, <won't. laughs> I mean, I did a um, I did a speed run through the product basically to see what's up with it. So. To, to a certain degree, I've gone through and made a plan. Uh, there's missing parts, but it was mostly to see. As maybe a lot of engineers do, what buttons exist? How do I press the buttons? Yeah. What do the buttons do? So uh, I think when I went through it, and then the week since, well, when I went through it, I was on a call with a marketer on my team who's uh, angling at the product, and it was useful to have her on, so it was a nice collaboration thing. Um, I do have these services, and I have a bunch of c- customers that are often new in business, and so... I was hoping today, because I think I have a good understanding of the individual product, we could talk about four people that help with business planning. Because oh, yeah. um, I know it's a different product. I know you demo it differently. I don't know if you're the right person. I'm only in the last day curious about that, and that's since after we scheduled mm-hmm. the meeting. So you're you're so essentially, it sounds like you're wanting to use this with other people, essentially. Yeah, I noticed you had like the four educator part and then the four Mm -hmm. consultants part, whatever you called that. I'd like to explore it from that perspective. Yeah, absolutely. No, I can I can give you a run through on that. That's uh, it's similar process, but you know, kind of the the parts that we're going to touch on are a little bit more focused on like you know your use of that. So cool. That's uh, that's that's great information. All right, let me uh, let me get my uh, let me get set up and then we can do a screen share. I'll I'll take you through all that. And yeah, like the, uh, I mean, some good metrics with this. I mean, you can kind of use this um, no matter like what size, like what scale you're using this at. Even if you only have like, like one or two clients, if you're just, if it's just you, if you're working with a team, uh, you know, when it when it comes to like the consultants uh, side of it, generally the the time when that gets like cost effective enough for you to to like you know talk to that team to get set up with like a volume account is when you have when you're going to need more than like four active seats at a time in your account or four or more. <clears throat> yep. And I can go over the business of that. How many, uh, how many clients are you, uh, are you glad you say four. I got five off the gate. I'm considering okay. two different shoe reselling types of software. Uh, okay. one of course might be my own. If that would fit the bill, I guess it might fit towards that five or not. I don't know. And then, um, there's another application for a wedding band that makes $2 million a year. Um, it's the last one. Uh, software that is being built out of Watertown, New York, which is a little tiny place where they don't really know much about software. But we have big ambitions. Yeah. Well, that's really good Really good info. Um, you know, like I said, this is, we have, there's a lot of, we use a lot of SBDCs colleges consultants use our software for this purpose because you know we really try to make it you know uh, uh, collaborative so uh, okay 
Okay, so let's pop through here really quick. But um, so you said you did a quick run through the of the uh, of the software. So I'm gonna kind of speed through just kind of like a overview of the software really quick, and then I'm gonna kind of uh, pivot to kind of the more like collaborative elements. Yep. So with the uh, with the plan section, I mean it's pretty straightforward. You know, we have, you have your you have your outline. You know, we worked with the SBA to kind of develop kind of like a one size fits all outline. Um, you know, that being said, the the two things that I usually like to point out here is uh, you know this outline is actually fully customizable. So if you if you you know it, like I said, we're we're kind of trying to cast a wide net here. So if you see something that doesn't really quite fit, or you're like looking for things that you know that are missing we do have a lot of like pre-made sections of like over here in this little menu if you go to the outline editor you just, mm -hmm. it's just real easy like drag and drop in here and a lot of these are you know have instructions in them and you know we've we've tooled the ai to if you're using the ai uh writing tool to uh you know write in your plan uh you know most of the ai is kind of corralled in these sections to like try and speak to these specific sections yeah. um <clears throat> however not Every single section is, is uh, built like that. If you add like custom sections, like it's just going to kind of just go with whatever you have written in your company description. Mm. Yep. This little part, which we use to train the AI for, you know, kind of further context. <clears throat> yeah. Um, but that being said, you know, it's a, it's an important thing to point out, especially if you're going to be working with others, because you know you're going to have all different types of businesses. So you know, uh, you can if they're if you have like a you know kind of a separate type of business structure, you know add different sections, charts, things like that in here as well. And you can drag mm -hmm. like any, any of these charts or any uh, extra tables into any part of the forecast that you want or any, I'm sorry, any part of the plan that you want. Yeah. And all of that, you know, all of this is all generated in the forecast. Um, we also do have, uh, you know, separate outlines as well uh, that, that are built as like a different company template if you are working with like nonprofits that have like a, a, a much more like a, a rigorous structure to it that is all tools profit's going to need to write about as opposed to, you know, for-profit company, which is kind of the default template is definitely for a for-profit company. Um, a few things to note in here as well, so when you're speaking about the collaborative features, um, we do have an in-app an in commenting feature, which is really useful because, you know, when you add people into your account, essentially, you'll be able to control, like, you know, which plans they're added to, you know, what they can access to a degree, like, you can you can set it to make sure if you have like accounting actuals in there, you can set to see if they can, to set it if they are able to see that or not. And, uh, but, and the way that a lot of like, uh, uh, you know, consultants use this is they will host like the actual plan in their paid account. Because like the way that the live plan is set up is that like the paid accounts are like a container for the companies, but then you can invite people as contributors to your account. And if they don't have, that works for if they have already have a live plan account, they can just log into your account uh, given that invite. But if they don't have a live plan account, what happens is that we uh, automatically generate a like a free like contributor profile or, or uh, free user profile, which they can only then access plans that they've been specifically invited to by uh, uh, account owners or authorized contributors. So yeah. if you have like partners that you're working with, you can set their uh, permissions to like you know, essentially. Uh, you know, be able to add users or create companies, um, and and then you kind of have like the master control over that at the account owner. Uh, and the reason the commenting thing is nice is like you know while you're working through this, it's like you're, you're reviewing the, the the content of the plan or the or the user or like the person you're writing for is like a guest in your plan, and they're able to come in here and make comments and be like, I, I have some questions about this, and you know they can write comments in here and that'll ping you or to ping them or whoever, whoever they're interacting with in, the, in this comment thread uh, in their email so they can come back in here. And it keeps everything really transparent, like the, the full process of writing. So you're not like having to go back through your emails and like, you know, try to organize that way. Um, the other aspect of that too is like, you know, if you are like, you know, if they're sending you over something that's like, you know, partially built out, uh, you know, real, real easy thing for them is you can just come through and like, you know, uh, set these little like, you know, indicators, these little progress indicators in there. Um, and you know these are really just built for like, at, like as like kind of visual representation of like, all right, I'm, I'm this far along in my plan. But that is definitely one of the more useful uh, aspects of those, where you can come in and like flag areas and just review. Uh, um, a couple other things to touch on in this in this area um, when you are exporting, um, 
there are, you know, because like the whole idea is to try and get as much information in one, into a single document as you can. A lot of people will do a separate forecast report export when they're taking it to lenders, um, but you can include a lot more of that detail that's not uh, added to your plan by default. Uh, usually it just has the three financial statements tacked on to the end, but you can actually add a lot more, like if you're uh, show more revenue de details, direct costs, and, and employee details just tacked on as an appendix on the plan. And it's going to have a little more detail than those charts that are actually that you can add into the body of the plan. Uh, this is going to be like basically like the tables out of the forecast. Um, you can add uh, a cover page and, with a with a logo on it, and you can also add. This is a really important thing I would point out is that you can add, if you click this, you can add like a you know kind of confidentiality statement that sits in the footer of every page. So you know, when you're sharing this with people or if people are sharing this with you, you know there's a, a kind of context of like you know don't share that with other people. Um, and it, essentially every part of live plan can be exported as a PDF, but the word, uh, the plan itself can be exported as a Word document in case you need to like add something like a custom theme that you have outside of live plan. Um, we have some built-in ones, but you know at this point they're they're fairly standard ones. Um, so if there is a custom one outside of live plan, that's a, a good place to add that. Um, and then the commenting feature is also present in the uh, in the forecast in a big way. So I mean you have all your you have your three financial uh, statements, and then you have your financial tables where you're going to do most of your data entry, and and all of these little sections. If you click on them, you can add notes to each each individual uh, cell. So a lot of people will like you know they have questions about something, or they're like you know trying to build in context for their assumptions that they're that they have in there. They can, you can add that in there, and you'll just see these little yellow tabs. And again, it works the same as like in the written plan, where it's going to send you uh, it's going to send you send you uh, messages to your email or like let you know that somebody commented on that and you can log in and, uh, and address that and, and talk within the actual software itself so everybody's been, again transparency is a big thing um <clears throat> so were there any at in particular questions you had about the forecast um itself as far as what functionality goes no i think i have more questions actually on what you just covered with the plan and that might be because you just covered it so if you covered the forecast maybe out of questions on that but i was hearing you say you have a pre-built outline for nonprofits. is we it do, possible yeah. on the con consultant side to build and save pre-built outlines to my own mm -hmm. designs and desires a hundred percent yeah cool. so let's then, uh, let's hop in Let's I don't need to see it. That's uh, all right. I don't want to take too much time on it. I'm sure okay. just to know that it exists is okay. I was also thinking then on the uh, needs review. It makes it very obvious which one needs to review and which one doesn't. It's like the in progress. Mm -hmm. I think not that I'm asking anyway. Is there anything that showed progress across the whole plan just to show in a very simple representation how close to 100% ready any uh, plan is? So it's not automated, no, okay. But but here in the gu in the in the guided path, and this is really for people who like you know have, have you know we're trying to take kind of like a step by step approach. I saw that and I thought it was nice. Yeah, it's like the business planning from kind of a more conceptual uh, standpoint. And yeah. in here, this will you can come through, and this will give you a pro world showing process that in, there. Okay. Perception. Okay. Yeah, exactly. No, that answers all my questions on plan. I'm ready to get into forecast then. Okay. Cool. Um. Uh, I do want to touch on uh, company management really quick, just so I can kind of show you how that works, because there is a little bit of ins and outs of that. Oh, okay, sure. Uh, so let's pop in there real quick, because this is going to, because this is kind of address kind of what you're talking about with wanting to make a template. So go into manage account. We're going to go to companies here. All right. So you'll see that I have, uh, in, in this account, this is a demo account, but you'll see I have all these companies that are archived. Okay. So these companies, like I have control over them, they're saved, they're just however I, I left them last. Um, and this is this is like essentially how I would recommend you create a template. So if you have like a, like an outline template, for example, you can come in here and here, let's go down and I've got, uh, here's a nonprofit template right here. Ah, uh, I see, it's, okay. It's got, a, it's got a bunch of like, it's got, a, you know, that template in there. But if I write in that, you know, that's gonna fill that, that company up, that, represents a whole I'm glad well. you showed me this because it's not yeah. it's not an official outline feature as much as it is a yeah. way to get the outline effect okay exactly so then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make a copy of that template right there and then I can and call it's just it gonna be a perfect yeah exactly it's just gonna be a perfect copy of that and that's also a good way if you're like trying like you know 
different approaches to the actual plan writing. It was a single plan who kind of taught me of that and realized, you know, I kind of want to go in a different direction with the plan. Because the forecast, you can have a bunch of different scenarios in the same in the same company, but the plan's going to kind of be set throughout the entire, for that one company. So, so yeah, you can make a bunch of templates that way. Um, all right, so let's pop back in here. So the forecast is, uh, so for working with, the, with somebody else's, uh, somebody else's information, you've got a couple different approaches you can take here. So if they have a, uh, if you're applying for like a, uh, an existing business, for example, um, you can use the forecast builder to just import their data into the actual written plan or into the forecast and the dashboard. Um, and the dashboard is essentially a tool for comparing your, uh, your plan actual or your like accounting actuals to your forecast. So you can, as, you, as you're moving along, you can monitor like your, your financial performance. And how does that stack up to you know, what, you know, how I thought I was going to do? And you can print out reports or export reports in real time, like, you know, month by month if, you, if you're looking for something like that. Um, but for, make, for working on other people's plans, this can also save a ton of work. And it also kind of starts you off from like a really like, you know, factual baseline. So I'm going to take you through that process really quick. Um, so we're going to jump in here. We're just going to say we're going to create a new scenario. And if you were to start a whole new company, it's going to give you this option as well. It's like, do you want to create a forecast just to get started from scratch, or do you want to connect to an accounting solution? So we're going to go through and connect to an accounting solution just because I want to kind of show you this relationship that we have with that. So we're going to go in here and we're going to, we're going to do into QuickBooks. And so what happens is live plan is now seeing my QuickBooks chart of accounts and, you know, generally chart of accounts and accounting solution is going to have you know, dozens, hundreds of entries essentially. So, and live plan, we're trying to take a more, uh, high level approach, you know, cause when, you know, you're taking this to a lender, they're going to want to see, you know, kind of the big picture. They're not going to want to go through every single different type of like, you know, like income and, you know, like different product that you sell necessarily, unless you only have a couple, which, then, which, which in that case, then it's important to separate them. But what will happen is live plan is going to come through here and it's going to just kind of give you suggestions of like, you know, how do you want this to appear in the forecast when, when we import this? So you've got, and this is all the, this is fully customizable as well. So, so for this, this is like a, like a sports medicine clinic essentially. Um, so I can come here through here and I'm like, well, this looks fine, except I want to organize it. I want to actually uh, have my massages in a whole other revenue stream. I don't want that just like on, in this like miscellaneous revenue. And I'm just going to move that down there. And you're like, all right, well, I I don't haven't had any income from this this uh, 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 revenue stream for like a really long time, and that's something from the past. It's in my chart of accounts, but I'm going to pull that out. So I'm just going to exclude you know things that don't really matter. And this also helps work like if you are just trying to create like a forecast that is really specific to one like product line, so you can kind of do a, like a cost comparison between like you know the full the full you know uh, picture versus just this one one aspect of it. You can do that as well. So then I just go through here, and it's just going to ask you some questions about like you know that essentially pertain to how Live Plan is going to map it. It's just asking me to you know, make sure that I'm including anything that's just payroll, uncheck anything that's not just payroll here. Same process with income taxes. I'm just going to kind of speed through this with time. Same with interest. And it's going to be a very similar uh, uh, process with my general expenses and my direct costs. So I'm just going to go through here and I'm going to build up my forecast. And so you can see, all right, cool. So it's it's imported all this, all this data from my QuickBooks and now it's built out this forecast. Uh, normally I wouldn't have my plan set like an entire year back. March, I'm, I have everything set back to kind of showcase some of the features in here. But what's going to happen, the way that this data behaves, is if you like open this, this uh, entry, for example, you'll notice that like these are all it's really close to the same here. It just kind of copies over the data from the previous year. So it gets you started off from that point. And like if you were to start, like if this plan was set in 2024, uh, it was still going to pull those 2023 numbers for that context. So this does help you kind of, uh, you know, but it's not going to be the same year over year, but this is a way to kind of quickly start to project growth for that person. So you can come in here, you can use this annual percentage change tool, and you can come through here 
you're like, all right, well, I want to project like you know a 10% front month of growth for this year, and another 10% after that, and I can just use that apply values right to this change across the board. And that will open up this this percentage based uh, you know, like these these cells down here. And this, you know, this isn't like the be all end all. You're probably going to want to come back in here and do some like just manual edits to kind of show that seasonality with your with your uh, your growth that you're showing. But this is a good way to kind of just get everything started to point in that direction. Um, and again, like kind of based off of like where the numbers were at at the beginning of that forecast. Uh, any questions so far? Well. How about the QuickBooks import there, that five-step <coughs> stepper? Just as a thought on if it were a new business or an idea at that stage, they're not going to have any of that. Okay, fine. They're not. So if they're an existing business and they have this, do you estimate for users how long to expect to take for that import to do that categorization and the thought behind that? I know in just saying it out loud, it took about five minutes and then we skipped over two or three, but I'm not sure. Five minutes, half an hour, hour, what's realistic, what people actually find themselves spending on that stuff? Uh, I'd say probably probably 30 minutes on average. Okay. You know, the, 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 the beauty about that is that, you know, you can have, you can always go back and kind of redo it as well. I can have up to 10 different forecast scenarios at the same time. Okay. Okay. Plan as well, so it's like it's not set in stone. It's just it's just really establishing the mapping for that one forecast essentially. Okay. So, yeah. Um. And the other the other cool thing about that too is uh, another way to look at that as well is like if you come into your your if it is accounting connected, uh, if you come into your P and L here, we've got what you just call the uh, the live forecast. And so what this does is this allows you to, uh, it gives you a uh, profit and loss statement that essentially is all of your actuals up to the point where now your, your projections are starting. And this is, this can be really helpful for like building out growth as well, because then you can really like, you know, like when you do sync this, these things for these first months should be kind of lined up, but you can also come in here uh, and we have this inline editing that we just added in as well. So you can just kind of take over from where where those numbers are leaving off as well. Um, and that's another good way to kind of look at that. And as and, you know, and as that month progresses, let's say you're working on this for like, you know, someone's plan for like a couple of months and those, those numbers are updating automatically at the beginning of each month, you can actually open these up, um, these entries, and then you can kind of look at side by side. It's like, all right, well, I had these projections in for, you know, February 24, but actual, but in actuality, this is how, this is how it actually performed, essentially. So, you know, it just kind of gives you, it kind of gives you a kind of a, a place to just really start checking, like how, how everything's matching up to like how you're actually uh, forecasting that. So it kind of gives you something to come back and check as well. If somebody's using this for, as like a financial management. Um, so there's that aspect of it. Um, the, this, one's, this one's a little more built out. And then the other part of this is, is, uh, you know, if you are just building from like a startup phase idea or just an idea, I mean, it is just going to be a lot of manual entry of this stuff as well. So I mean, you can come in here and I'm going to kind of show you this just so you can kind of see the different. Uh, no, please, that's stuff. not. I've been through it. I know it. Okay. I am happy to skip this one. OK, no problem. Thank you. All right. Um, yeah, no problem. Um, the other thing to pay attention to if you're planning for an existing business, too, is how this populates these unit balances. This okay. should pull over automatically from your uh, your uh, uh, QuickBooks, but this is also something if they don't have an accounting connected, uh, like a, a zero or QuickBooks account, you know, this is really where you're going to start the forecast. Mm -hmm. And this differs from, you know, kind of like the detail that's in the dashboard, because the dashboard will pull two, two years or priors into it. This is like really just kind of setting the asset value of your company, like, you know, like of, at the start date of the forecast. Mm -hmm. And one place where people will get hung up on this is that. You know, they'll get they'll really want to like detail like you know individual assets for example if you're like well i bought you know two company vehicles in in 2023 and i would like to detail that so you know there is a choice in that matter like philosophically how you're going to approach this like you can set your plan date back to you know a, like a previous period like you know especially if you are building out for something where it's like you know you are pre-revenue but you do have costs already that you're that you're putting in 
you know, that is something where it might be important to really just, you know, set your plan to where those costs are actually going to start as opposed to like when your revenue is going to begin. Um, so, so. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, that's, I mean, if you've gone through the, if you've gone through it here, it's, it's pretty straightforward, you know, the, the forecast itself. Um, yeah. There's a, couple, there's a couple other areas that I always want to touch on in here. Um, the, uh, the burden rate is something that's built in. And this is really designed for like startups specifically, you know, people who are like, or in their idea uh, stage of their business where they're not really sure, like, you know, what their, you know, kind of employee related costs are going to be. So it allows, it gives you like a, essentially like a percentage based calculator of like, you know, how much my payroll is getting essentially sent into like employee related costs, like, you know, healthcare benefits, payroll taxes, yep. you know, workman's comp, stuff like that. But you don't have to use that. You can actually, if you are trying to be more specific, you can just set this to zero and just add those into your straight line expenses. But mm -hmm. it's just important to make sure that those are set as that you're using one or the other and not both, because then you're just going to throw on the forecast uh, mm -hmm. calculation and screw your cash flow. Okay. okay. Um, and then you have a, let's, let's skip down to the pitch really quick. Um, the, uh, the pitch builder is, is uh, it's just kind of like the bullet points. Uh, oh. it, it does allow you to, yeah, it, 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 it does allow you to kind of give this, like, create this one page pitch. I noticed I, this was disconnected from the plan in the having to create it way. So I went to a, more or less a full plan. I hit publish on the mm -hmm. pitch, and then I'm there with my marketer, and she said, well, we didn't do the pitch part. And I thought, mm -hmm. I thought we just did this whole plan. Why isn't there? No. That is yeah, how it's well, built, and I don't know yeah. that it's got plans to be built in a way that one influences the other more readily in the future or what. I don't know if you could speak to that. That might be a little inside baseball, you know, I'm not sure. No, it's okay. I mean, that is something we are currently working on where, you know, essentially we can generate a pitch based on what you have in your plan. Okay. Um, it's just, it's, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a matter of uh, making sure that we're, uh, that it's going to work well for our, our users. So no, that's fine. Yeah. But me and my engineering yeah, brain, I'm thinking, you know, I could build a better product than this, and this is exactly where I'd start. I'd make an online pitch version. And then you had it. So I was thinking, oh, okay, pretty cool. It was just like, yeah, uh, and, you know, nuanced part of it. And it's cool. It's got the, it's basically like a shortened version of the plan. So yeah, I'd like, like to see the published thing. version, because mine yeah. was empty. I didn't. Yeah. Um, so the published version of it is essentially, you just click this, and it's going to look just like this. Yeah. Uh, so, and it, it, you just have the, it just a URL that like it is uh, accessible by whoever you send it to. And okay. you do have control over that. So if you want that URL link to break, you can just kind of just stop it. Oh, yeah. And then you have to resend it to whoever, you know, just like a little add a, a additional security. But cool. when it does print out, when it does get sent over, it'll just look like this. It'll just be like a one page that you can just scroll down and get the, get the, the info for your, your pitch. Cool. Yeah. Um, and then we have the benchmarking tool. Um, this is uh, this is going to auto assign you a NIAX code when you uh, first log into oh, that's helpful. my plan. Yeah, and do some government work, and they're always caring about that. Yeah. And so you know, they uh, call it a NIX. They just call it the NIX code. A NIX, code. okay. NIX yeah. code. Okay, cool. Thanks. Yeah. yeah so they're gonna it's gonna it's gonna base off of like what you have in here. But it's always a good idea to just go in here and do a search anyway. Um, and we also have like if you ever are, if you're having a hard time finding like the right NIX code, you can always reach out to us we have a we have a whole kind of like you know, tree to get to it um, yeah I mean, no it's the worst thing in the world trying to find that so do you mean you provide that as just regular customer customer support getting to the next code yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. Cool. if somebody's gonna if somebody's having a hard time finding their industry just reach out to us and we can and we can uh we can give you the one to use oh, uh, brilliant. we started using uh vertical iq is the company that we've, we've been using recently and so this is really and uh so they have a whole breakdown of like what how, how to use their data set um but Very this cool. just gives you some metrics to kind of compare your forecast and your actuals against, um, and then allows you to kind of set like date ranges as well. Uh, your, that data will change a little bit, and like the size of your company. Uh, uh, we don't have regional uh, data built in yet, but this is all U.S.-based data as well. Uh, um, yeah. Aside from that, it's pretty it's pretty straightforward. Um, it's just a good kind of bellwether to kind of figure out like, are you am I really overestimating or am I really underestimating? I don't really have my calendar access. Do we have thirty minutes on the calendar? Do we have an hour? We have uh, 45 minutes, and we've got okay. uh, another 15 minutes left. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, there's that. A lot of customers really like that. And then another. here's another collaborative feature that comes in the, the, 
can be really helpful. Uh, so this is the this is just the milestones table. Uh, really, it's just like an integrated calendar into Live Plan. And yeah. there's a couple different ways to do this, where it's like a lot of people will set like kind of like uh, you know company milestones to include with their plan, which is nice. That also uh, imports automatically into your uh, pitch as well uh, when you add these in. Uh, but the other thing, what, cool way to use this as well is to uh, as kind of like a you know kind of like a meta milestones so if like you have if you're working as a team within within the same plan you can set like in, like individual goals within the actual creation of the plan itself mm. you know, and, and give yourself a timetable and then have like a place where people can come yeah when are we going to be done with the market. marketing exactly. segmentation exactly. okay exactly. Um, so you see chris is in charge of finishing the executive summary by the certain date could i ask you so, then um can we skip to this sort of business model on if i'm consulting with this is it something that i'm able to uh, I guess I take on five business plans for clients of my own. Am I paying, you say there's a volume discount and they're mm -hmm. seeing what I'm paying or are they putting in the credit card and I'm getting a percentage of what that volume discount is into like a, you know, I don't know what you call that, a referral fee or just so I'm aware of how that and mind you, actually, maybe the thing to do, because I'm pretty set on wanting to do it, is to just go down that path now. I don't know if you can do that with me now. I was going to say, I can, I, I can send you over the consultant link. And if, have you filled that out yet? No, no, I didn't I didn't get cool. past uh, just the idea of it. So. Yeah, and I'll, I'll let her, I'll let her uh, our consultant know. Let's, yeah, let's if anybody's available call. tomorrow, I guess I could get in and talk to them pretty fast. Uh, but yeah, so... There's a few different ways it works. I mean, some people, uh, it, it, I mean, generally the billing side of your clients is, is really up to you, like how you're going to do that. We don't really handle like client billing uh, yep. for our consultants. Yep. So you're you're charging them a fee for the services and like you're essentially using your live client account as like the, the hub where you're keeping their business. Oh, yeah. Plan, and then that answers my question then. That answers, yeah. And then, and I maintain the direct relationship and I'm just a reseller yeah. or whatever, how I want to phrase it. Gotcha. Exactly. And then some people also do it kind of in the reverse manner where they have just like a regular live plan account with it, without the volume pricing. And then they're like, all right, well, I'm going to, you have like they require their clients to you know, get a live plan subscription so then they can invite you as a contributor to their. Oh, okay. yeah, I guess that'll always be a risk. Yeah. yeah. So it, it works in a few different ways. So it, it really just depends on the scale and, you know, if you do have a team working with you, it's a lot better to have like, you know, a kind of consultant type account where you actually have like, you know, because you have everybody's access and there's a lot of like, you know, kind of oversight and everybody can access in the same, in the same container. Yep. A lot less like worrying about like, you know, your new client not knowing how to like invite you, like all of your team to their account and stuff like that. So, yeah. Yeah. You call that like an admin dashboard and a lot of tools, that type of thought. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. That's uh, about it. That's, I mean, that's about it. Unless you have any other questions for me, that I can get the, um, can, uh, mobile app, just like an actual Appity app that dumps, you download from the app stores. Yeah, we don't have a mobile app as of yet. We, Nobody we ever wanted it enough. I mean, it's a very robust web tool. I guess it's it's fine. We do, we do, it does work on mobile, but yeah, we. Oh yeah. Um, let's see beyond that. I get into. Uh, maybe more specific on on my plan there. I was doing the the right with AI in a couple of places. Mm -hmm. It's new, you know, to the whole world to do AI stuff. I wonder how do you see how is the conversation around AI influencing the product? And uh, a couple things that jump out at me when I'm talking to my marketers. Why are we doing any forecasting at all? Why isn't the AI just coming up with some numbers? I don't know. I don't know if you get into those conversations or not, and I wonder uh, a little bit. That's just future thinking, you know. We're about yeah. to be investing as a consultant. We're here in March. Mm -hmm. Well, what's it going to look I like mean, in December? Totally different, more the same in the sense of it's built, it's proven, it's cool. Don't know. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, kind of. I mean, that's. I mean, that's a, not a bad question to ask. I mean, so kind of the way that we look at it is that you know we're trying to start small and then move into those. Things that territory because you know at the end of the day like we are yeah that's of course the business planning tool and we're trying to make sure that we're encouraging our customers in a way that we feel is responsible to like you know continue to you know be engaged with the numbers and the yeah. content that you're sending to a lender 
you know. Yeah. So we're being really careful about how we deploy, like, you know, AI assumptions, essentially, into, in, into the forecast. Not okay. to say that that's not something we're not working on, because we are, but it's, you know, it's something we, we're putting a lot of thought into, like, how we want to approach that, because even with the written plan exception, it's like, you know, we're, we deployed it, and then we're also trying to, like, make sure that we have guardrails in place to make sure that our customers are informed that, like, yeah, you, like, this is great, this is a good tool for helping you write, you know, especially if you're English is a first language, or you just like are having writer's block. There's a lot of ways we kind of, you know, to use this. But also, at the end of the day, you need to know and be able to like support and have a full understanding of like what you're taking to that uh, to that loan officer as, or the investor, because you know otherwise you know, you're, they're gonna you know, send you packing. <laughs> so you know, we want our we want our customers to be successful. So uh, and we use our software. So that's really kind of like our our thought on it. Uh, okay. You know, we do have suggestions that you can make, like, you know, if you're having a hard time brainstorming, like, you know, uh, you know especially in the ideas phase or uh, startup phase with customers where it's like, you know, like Black Plan will generate some suggestions for you uh, as far as like what kind of like revenue, what kind of expenses a certain business might have. But as far as building in that, those numbers, we're, you know, again, we're just, we're just being very careful about how we approach that. So we're not like, you know, giving, like throwing something out there that we can't really like back up on our end say like oh yeah we just told you that you're gonna make this much money <laughs> does that make sense <clears throat> in so many ways yeah. yeah i wonder with the accounting connections you've got zero in quickbooks good i can't <laughs> imagine any other ones that exist out there and then i wonder about the other connections and then thinking about uh on the export side i think i saw like a pdf one you know um mm -hmm. i have somewhere and this is like my engineer brain going uh something that says uh i don't know files over apps it's the guy that wrote obsidian he was obsessed with markdown just a simple export of just the raw data i don't know because i did the pdf is there like a word doc editable version that say somebody's they've done their plan they're happy enough they also still want to keep it for you know, 20 years from now maybe live plans around or not are there full data exports like that so there are so with the with the plan you, there's a word export with the with the forecast there's a, a, a csv plan as well oh simple uh, cool yeah um with the caveat that we you know we don't have our formulas built into the into the export but you will get all of your data tables uh including like all the financial statements as well so what does that mean you get the output numbers not the way you get to the output numbers yeah yeah i got mean it. So, yeah exactly yeah got so, it um yeah, so I mean, there's that, and we actually are uh, in the process. It you know, should be here in the next like like week or so that we're going to deploy uh, a CSV import as well. Nice. Just, like open up. So that that and essentially the way that that's going to work is it's going to is that like you know because people are going to have so many different ways that they have their uh, their uh, Excel set up that we're going to kind of have a template that you can drop uh, drop your data into in a way that will import into Live Plan in a way that like is going to be for you without like you know creating a, a big confusing mess yeah good luck with that it's data mapping yeah. and i've built that before and it's um good when it's good so i'm sure you guys are going to come up with i'll be very uh, looking forward to that for nerdy reasons mm -hmm. about it yeah. um well i don't know that i have anything more in terms of questions do you have questions for me i do not um i was going to say did you see my email earlier uh the uh the one with the permission request uh, what email did you send it to? I don't remember. I've got a few of them. Is it uh, accounts, accounts at or yeah? Accounts at myth.software. Yeah, bear with me now. I'm pulling up Gmail live here, and I'll do that. Uh, yeah. Sometimes here. those end up in your spam folder. I just wanted to make sure that you uh, were uh, paying attention to that email. So when I sent you over the consultant's sure. uh, information, I could. Let's see. Live. I'm glad you mentioned the spam because I don't see it. It doesn't mean it's not there. I wonder, uh, no, I don't. You say it's at accounts at myth.software? Yeah, interesting. Yeah, please. Right, well, I can, I can send it to you. Uh, I, I'll send you a follow-up uh, via our CRM instead. That doesn't seem to get bounced into, into a spam as much, well, as much as our, uh, as our customer service portal. So. Okay. 
All right. Well, Peter, it was nice talking to you. Yeah, and, uh, you too, Benjamin. I wish yeah. I have an opportunity to follow up with you. Do I, if I want to schedule another one? Um, we generally don't do a ton of uh, follow-up calls, but if you are having uh, issues, that's something to check on. Actually, I can totally do that for you. Uh, if you need to get a hold of us, and you can, you can, you can reach out to me directly. I'm, you know, I'm happy to do like short phone calls or like a 15-minute video call. But yeah, uh, onboarding. Uh, but you can just click here, and support. And yep. we have uh, people in live chat, 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. Monday to Friday. Cool. You can also just email us as well. So, And that's a really good way if you need help right now. Like, so if you have a customer that's like locked out of their account mm. or is having a hard time getting in, well, that's, like, that's well, the immediate thing. What's your know? email if I wanted to direct contact? It would be Benjamin Garcia at LivePlan or something like that? Or? It would, uh, just reach out at uh, help at liveplan.com, and you can, just, you can just ask for my name. I ask for Ben. Good. It'll okay. Be, yeah, they'll, they'll get assigned to me. So. Awesome. All right, well, very nice to meet you again, Ben. Have a nice day.